Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, once again. The lady very close to him is Yumi Satwe Jide. <laughs> okay, um, when I was called to do this thing, I thought, wow, I was in the UK and it was almost like, no, I had to stop everything I was doing and come here because since I left law school, I think this is the first time I am able to speak to people I worked with, I schooled with, I've not seen in ages. I thought it was a really good opportunity. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Victor Sotonye, David. Thank you so much for having me come out here today. It's such a huge honor and congratulations for being able to put up such a beautiful and well-attended event. I envy you. Well done, guys. Um, when I decided to become a lawyer, it was basically because I wanted to prepare myself for new challenges, especially after making babies. I have so many children. So um, I wanted to be able to protect myself and protect other people from the biases of society and from the unjust practices that we see all across. So I didn't want to be left behind. I wanted to safeguard against the repercussions of engaging with people who wanted to take everything that you possess in the name of doing business. Because I was uh, going through so much at that time in my life. I was getting duped. I was losing money. I was getting beaten up by people I loved. And I was being excluded from transactions and deals that I had conceived. So I wanted to become a lawyer so I can protect myself, protect the people I love, and potentially protect other people who will seek me out to do so for them. So I concluded that becoming a lawyer would enable me spot irregularities and more swiftly protect those that I, I really want to protect and be able to help clients who would hire me to do the same for them. But I soon discovered that being a lawyer is more than that. It is actually a calling. So it's an enormous responsibility, and it's a responsibility most of us lawyers in Nigeria have not yet recognized. We do not know how important being a lawyer is. It's almost as important as being a doctor and saving lives, because it is on us to protect everybody, every institution of Nigeria, and we need to begin to take that responsibility very seriously. I was recently yanked off the NBA platform because I would not see speaking about the primary responsibility of our senior lawyers and the justices, senior justices of our courts for the problems we have in Nigeria today. Every one of us likes to talk, but we don't really like to address the real issues. But I'm going to do my best to do that in the short, short time I have here today. Now, our lawyers, our magistrates, our judges, justices of the higher courts, and a lot of our senior lawyers are often willing to twist our laws and by so doing, sacrifice justice, equity, fairness, and good conscience on the altar of technicalities. It's just the truth. They sometimes serve us predetermined outcomes influenced by other forces instead of the forces that should influence the results we get from our courts. The time to change that is now, and it is on us young lawyers to do it. It is common knowledge that our judicial arm of government is comprised almost entirely of lawyers, and this is to be expected. However, if we pause to examine the legislative and executive arms of government in Nigeria today, especially during the last 24 years, we will discover that they were mostly lawyers or are lawyers, and these are the people that have caused the problems that we are dealing with in Nigeria today. Just investigate, do your research, check all the political figures from 1990 to this day, and you discover that many of them are lawyers or were lawyers before they became politicians or, or government agents or whatever they are today. So lawyers make up more than 50% of the personnel in all the three arms of government in Nigeria, and this has been the case for a very long time. So I'm not entirely off track when I tell us that lawyers are primarily responsible for the situation we find ourselves in our dear country today. So lawyers are in the best position to right the wrongs. And it is junior lawyers who should begin this process. We cannot sit back and wait for senior ones who created the mess to clean it up. They won't. So we must take responsibility and begin to systematically address the issues. We must learn to speak truth to power. We must work ethically. We must tell those that are around us who are getting it wrong to begin to do it right. 
because if we do not do this we are all going to pay dearly for it and we are already paying very dearly for what the seniors have done up to now so we must do the best we can for the advancement of ourselves and our country it is a huge challenge it is a huge challenge to stand up or speak up against our parents our elders our mentors employers our benefactors especially when we know that they hold prestigious titles like mom dad pastor imam doctor professor oon nsn dssr mfr san it's difficult to stand up to people who are that large to us and speak truth to them but we have to try and these are people we also look up to yet many of them have significantly contributed to the creation and perpetuation of nigeria's dysfunctional leadership and governance system we hesitate to confront them because if we confront or oppose them <laughs> the consequences may be very dire for us and our loved ones some of us confide in me daily i'm glad that my brother um, mentioned that there is minimum wages for lawyers i never heard of it because a lot of us some of us even here told me that even till now they still earn thirty thousand naira, which is the official minimum wage in nigeria and some of them are already nearing 10 years post call that's not all all okay and then let me not deny the fact that some of us are actually very happy to contribute and be part of the um let me say unfairness and irregularities in our system there are lots of junior lawyers who are very happy to do the wills and the demands of the senior lawyers who are not necessarily ethical lawyers because of the advantages to them they get to have um they get to have uh, confirmment that is not due to them as a result of being part of the difficulties so but we do know that a lot of us are definitely able to compete favorably with our seniors a lot of us went to law schools or other schools or worked in foreign jurisdictions where we have been exposed to systems that actually work technologically and uh, uh, um, AI they work for us and we are able to use the systems to help clients and we will definitely compete better or even do better than our senior lawyers but we cannot do anything because we are expected to basically do as we are told which I, to which I respectfully disagree I hardly ever do as I'm told if it's not right I'm not doing it so we do not have to continue in this path because if we continue in this path we are going to end up in a much bigger trouble than we are we have the power to change the narratives and the time to begin to do that is now young lawyers must work together to achieve financial independence two of our colleagues here and our uh, minister had already told us that money is one of the biggest problems that young lawyers have but we can solve that problem i am calling on all the young lawyers in nigeria that we need to now begin to work together to establish a legal entity which will look out for us and put good money in our pockets and we can do it it is i'm calling on those of us who are seeking who are not seeking shortcuts who are not looking for the shortest way to big money or who to swindle rather i'm looking for those who are willing to harness today's and future technologies and innovations to create their own wealth and people who are content with the earnings that their hard work affords them my call is to those of us who want to work for their financial and career development and who are willing to contribute to the new entity that we are going to build and an entity that will foster ethical behavior and cultural change in our legal sector we must we must as young lawyers have means to decline propositions that run counter to our best interest as a people and then we have to have the financial we have to be able to develop the financial growth and prosperity for all young lawyers if we do this we will see that ethical behavior become much more common between lawyers and judicial officers and over time that culture will spread i've seen you i've seen you <laughs> that culture will spread into government sector because the future leaders uh, of nigeria are also those of us here today now so we have the opportunity to shape the, the future a better nigeria that we desire 
where our lawyers, our, sorry, our judicial officers, traditional rulers, public servants, politicians, and influential figures who are all amongst us right now will uphold ethical standards and do things for the interest of people. Many of us who attended Nigerian Law School during the 2015 time remember what we did then. We actually worked in the six campuses. We developed, uh, we set up platforms on WhatsApp, Facebook, where we're working in the six, uh, six um, campuses to help ourselves to pass the bar finals. And quite a lot of us scaled bar finals at the first uh, try, and many of us came out of first class once and all because we worked as a team. So we were able to use technology back then, and we called ourselves Wig and Gang Guaranteed, which we got from Olowolani. He was way of telling us that everybody must work hard, and if you work hard, you'll get the result. We had fun, but we worked also, and a lot of us came out of law school at the first instance, and with very, very good group. So we can replicate that system by implementing technology for our financial welfare as young lawyers. So, whether we are abroad, whether we are in Nigeria, whether we are working for SAS or who we are working for, we can come together to create a platform where we are all working for the benefit of this country and ourselves. You make a lot of money using all these technological advancements, all the different areas where we are experts, bring it together and then figure out how to make sure that everybody is earning what they deserve, not getting whatever the minimum is and then having too little to look out for themselves and then eventually being in the position where somebody offers you some stupendous money, you are tempted to do the wrong thing. We can begin to change all that by working together as young lawyers, taking care of each other's finances, not as charity, but as, okay, this is my expertise, this is what I'm able to do. We come in, we find you what to do, we pay you for what you are doing, and you are able to look after yourself and your family or loved ones. So it's, it, it's time to stop complaining and time to start working together to build up a system, a working system where we can all make the money we need to make, be independent by the time they are appointing us ministers, judicial officers, judges, whatever, we are still able to continue that culture of doing the right thing, being professionals and making judgments based on what we really believe is the right thing for whatever the circumstances presented to us is. Thank you very much. Thank you.